Hello and welcome to a little Chart School 101. This is Jeff Kohler, aka The Option Addict from OptionAddict.net. Not here with the watch list this week, folks, but I'm actually going back to the past here a little bit, something I used to do quite a bit last year, which was to do an occasional educational video on various trade topics. And today, not going to be on the topic of options, but better yet, on how to draw trend lines. So there was some recent discussions as this would be a good idea to do a video on and so I'm here to add a few topics, suggestions and points of interest that might help you when drawing your own trend lines. Now, before we get started, I will confess I am not the best of the best when it comes to drawing trend lines. However, I did place once at a state fair. Yahoo! But in all seriousness, there is not such a thing. It's all a relative analysis and as you'll find, it's a lot easier than you might think. Now since we're going to be talking about trend lines, I find it most fitting to start with our first topic, and that is, what is a trend? If you were to look up the definition in the dictionary of what a trend is, it is to extend in a general direction or to follow a general course. And that we're dealing with price charts and price action, that is going to be applied to which direction prices are moving, up, down, or sideways. Now to constitute a trend, you know, let's say if we're talking about an uptrend here for example, an uptrend would be a series of higher highs and higher lows. The word highs and lows are plural, which means these occurrences have to have happened at least twice for us to use them as the term support or resistance or trend. And what's most important when you're dealing with trends and especially trend line is that you have evidence of their significance. Before we get into all that though, I think we need to go over a few how-to basics on the topic of support and resistance. <laughs> Like I had mentioned before, a trend can move up, down, or sideways. Say, for example, if we're talking about the old S&P 500. And I were to show you that the S&P 500 had been in a nice upward trend. I could also show you, if I were looking at a shorter term chart, that the S&P had been in a nice sideways trend. Or if I were to look at a very, very recent price chart, I could show you that the S&P 500 has been in an awful nice downtrend. Now, don't get confused quite yet, because what I'm trying to point out is that one of the most important topics, especially in this conversation, is what is your time frame? I'm a very short-term trader, as you may or may not have noticed. So all the longer-term trend lines, the stuff that you'll find on five-year charts, ten-year charts, you know, th those, those don't impact me as much as you might think. I take note of them, but when I'm planning trades, most of what I'm planning around is what goes on over the course of recent time frame. What I've been watching here last week in the S&P 500 was this old support right at around 1400. As the market broke below that, it also rallied right back to this level. And it was this that I was watching for when we approached this area to plan a trade around to get short the market. Which, by the way, happened to have worked out pretty good. But while we're on the topic of support and resistance, I can't go too much long without going over the topic of consistency. <laughs> Now the word consistency should apply to you in many senses. First off, it should be with your time frame. If, for example, I'm always curious about what's happening over on the right hand side of the chart. While I notice a lot of investors are always worried about what's going on on the left hand side of the chart. I'm always concerned with the most recent price data. As an example, let's go to a financial favorite of mine, Morgan Stanley, ticker symbol MS. Now if I arrived at this chart right here, right now, I've got to determine what the trend is. Where's the repeatable pattern of support and resistance? And looking at this chart starting today, the thing that jumps out at me right away is that we seem to be kind of in a nice little downward trend for about the last three months. I say that because going further back, none of that price action applies. If I were to extend my support line, yeah, I might get some reaction over here. But what about the big blank spot in between? All these lows that you see in September, October, and November don't really correspond with the lines I have drawn here. Therefore, I can't really use them. 
So what I'd be watching here is these recent support and resistance levels, which you should always give more weight to recent activity, obviously, and less weight to the activity that doesn't correspond with your trend lines. Now, another question of consistency that I get asked is, you know, hey, Jeff, do you use highs and lows or do you use opening and closing prices? I've always preferred the latter, opening and closing prices. Uh, in fact, that goes back to some studies I did of Dow theory and how Charles Dow had always preferred that. And for the same reasons that I do, is I find that they hold more significance, they hold more weight. But a lot of authors like uh, Murphy, for example, will tell you that it only represents a small portion of price action and it is, quote, not the norm to use just that data. I'm not here to tell you which one you should use, but if you want to be a successful trader, closing prices worked well for me. And it's not as much on how I draw my trend lines. It's really how I plan a lot of my trades and how I exit trades. It's why I've always just used closing prices. And I'm a big fan of using line charts. So, for example, you, we switch over to line charts, and you'll notice that those are plotted on closing prices, not highs and lows. So whichever you choose, to me, it doesn't matter, just as long as you stay consistent with that and you don't go back and forth. Because the more inconsistencies you have in your approach, the more inconsistent your results are going to be. Consistency plays a part in trend lines as far as how explosive or how dynamic the trade is going to be. For example, if we look at Google, ticker symbol G-O-O-G, -O -O -G, we look at the old five-year chart. There's been a nice little support line for Google ever since its inception that it's been holding really well until recently it broke through it with some tremendous force. The longer a trend line's been in action, the harder it's going to fall when it gives way. Same thing to the upside. I've been watching Clean Harbors, ticker symbol CLHB. The reason why? I saw that it was trading around a long-term support line right at around 55. As soon as it got to that level, as soon as it got a little buying pressure behind it, boom. It's exploded. Now, after something like this happens, we shouldn't leave trend line analysis alone because more than likely what happens is after a break of a support or resistance level, that old level will become a new support or resistance level. Hence, right now, I'm watching for CLHB to pull back to 55. Same thing can be said for TNH. This was a stock we followed on the blog a while back. We're looking at this as a long-term ascending triangle pattern. And sure enough, upon the breakout here in late December, it used that old resistance as new support in early January. So once price has exceeded a certain trend line of yours, don't ignore it quite yet because that's normally going to be a resting points for prices once the surge cools off. Now one other topic I want to discuss as far as consistency is concerned is what I've titled emptiness. And I'm back here to a chart of Morgan Stanley because I can see that a lot of traders, especially when they're learning how to assess price patterns, will come up with just some real doozies. And one of the most important concepts in looking at price patterns and drawing your support and resistance lines is consistency and conformity. Meaning that every time a stock goes up, you want it to adhere to your resistance line. Every time it goes down, you want it to adhere to your support line. Any places in between where that does not happen, in my opinion, is a weakness in the analysis. For example, I can see how some traders might look at some of this price action here and say, oh wow, you know, there was, a, uh, there was a, a big symmetrical triangle here on Morgan Stanley. Which, by the way, I mean, you can draw any two points on a chart and you can make a triangle out of anything. I mean, it's absurd. But the real triangles are those that adhere to the rules of conformity, which I'm about to discuss. The term emptiness occurs when you're drawing a support or resistance line and you have a real big empty space where prices should be adhering to your resistance, but they are not. For example, if I move this, you'll see there were a lot of highs right through here that didn't make it up to resistance. For every time the stock does not go up and adhere to a resistance line, that makes it that less reliable or that less existent, if you know what I mean. So when you're drawing trend lines, like I said, you want every single point to adhere to your support or resistance levels, kind of similar to how I had drawn here with this nice little channel. You can see that every time the stock goes down, it's coming down to the support level. Every time it's going up, for the most part, it's getting approaching or getting pretty darn close to this resistance level. But the number of times where it does not touch, if we have more points within the trend that don't touch than do touch, we need to reevaluate our analysis. So before I wrap up, I'm going to leave you with a few closing thoughts. You'll notice that when I draw my trend lines, I'm using uh, a pretty thick marker to do so. 
I don't want you to treat support and resistance as a razor sharp area or I especially don't want you to treat it as a certain price you know at like forty seven dollars and eighty eight cents you know that's non-existent when you're drawing trend lines use a crayon not a fine tip pen treat it as an area not a specific price and on the popular topic of what do you do with trend line violations and confirmation like I said I've always used closing prices but that's something that if you haven't decided on right away you ought to do so pretty quickly Anyway, that's about all the time I have for you today, folks. Hopefully there's been some good ideas here. This will be plugged away in the archive so you can use it at your convenience, and hopefully it makes a difference in your trading. In the meantime, this has been Jeff Kohler, The Option Addict. Thanks for watching.